My 1 16th birch plywood came in, so this is the leading edge material that will be wrapped around the leading edge, but it's also what the uh, nose ribs are cut out of. Here's an example of why you dry fit everything, and of course dry fit your first piece to verify that it's going to fit. So obviously the print is shrunk a little bit. Or I just didn't trace it well enough. But anyway, so this from this here, I'll I'll make it to the correct size. So now I've got it right on size, but I didn't like the thoughts of trying to get this here notch perfect so that it butts up against here as well as here, and get glue everywhere. So I made it. A little bit longer not by much and so I can put about a, a little less than an eighth of an inch of glue back here now any of you other builders with experience if you think there's something wrong with doing it that way let me know but uh, I considered doing that last few times last few wings I've built and I just this is the first one I'll do it with unfortunately the pieces that they cut it into two foot pieces and I thought I was going to get four foot pieces which would not be bad but with two foot pieces that means every other every other nose rib is going to have to be an eighth inch because you use an eighth of an inch uh, where you're where you splice these together or where you butt butt join them so where one stops and the other begins, use, use an eighth. Another thing I considered instead of an eighth is just use two sixteenths on each side of this, on each side of the nose rib, or uh, the rib, I mean, on each side of the rib. Uh, tell me what you think of that, if you think that's a good or bad idea. In other words, one there. And the other one here. And the splice, of course, would be in between the two. So while I'm tracing those ribs and cutting them out, and I'm just going to cut them out individually, I'm probably not going to stack them and try to do it that way. I'll just, just uh, one at a time. They go pretty quick, actually. Uh, while while that's going on, I'll also be uh, checking out. I got to get on the aileron, and that's always a hassle, a bit of a hassle. Every time I do it, you have to you have to think about it. <laughs> it's not it's just not just mindless. Okay, relaxing time. You actually have to think. So, first thing we're going to do is see how this end is formed, and we'll go to the print, and it'll show that this is not the end, but actually part of the aileron. The end part is built beyond it, and that's shown right. Whoop! I need a little more room back here. And that's shown right here. There we go. Got some focus there. And uh, so here's the rib, and that rib continue. Uh, well, it'll be cut off, but right now we're going to build that aileron right into it, and it continues on as part of the aileron. And then we'll just use a piece of eighth inch plywood out here and it'll have a quarter inch clearance gap between the aileron and then this piece. So we'll just use a piece of rib cap, you know, a piece of this material, which is quarter inch. We'll just use a piece of that. We'll just, I just uh, take a piece and I just stand it up off the table right there and one right there. And yeah, whenever I'm gluing, gluing this here piece right here and it says C detail, I think it's C, to trace it, but you don't want to trace it off your print. You'll want to trace it off of here, and I'll do that in just a second. Now the other end of the aileron, come on, the rib stays with the main part of the wing. The rib doesn't go with the aileron, so we do the opposite thing over here. 
and I think we're already set up for doing that. Right. So what we'll do is this here is part of the stays with the main part of the trailing edge. And then this here, of course, isn't glued or anything in here. And I uh, got a little bit of bow there. But we'll bu we'll uh, do the same kind of uh, uh, quarter inch gap. We'll just put a couple pieces here for a quarter inch gap. And we'll build the same eighth inch um, uh, piece out here. We'll also trace it along this side here. And we'll probably... This doesn't take much to just bend it out. Probably won't put much pressure on it. That's not going to change your, your flight dynamics at all. So probably leave it, just, just make it so that this here pulls in snug against it. And of course, we'll cut this quarter inch. Come on, focus. We'll cut this quarter inch right here uh, for clearance, you know. And that's the first step in building the aileron. So I get it clamped along the bottom here. It's perfectly aligned with the bottom. And of course, just trace along the rib and the trailing edge here. And uh, go. That was simple. Now as you're going you're gonna find little anomalies like this that you're gonna want to repair. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some real heavy grit, probably 40 grit on my belt sander. And uh, it's not too bad here. It's like within less than a sixteenth of an inch right there. Probably 31 thousandths. 132. Anyways, uh, but this here, that's a good eighth of an inch at least. So I'll go ahead and kind of just from right in here, blend it. Well, I might even start clear at that rib and, and blend this down. This is the only one that's really like that. The rest, and it's the trailing edge, or it, it's uh, the outer edge of the aileron. So I'll want to, and it's also where the wingtip bow comes. So if I take and I make the... Uh, this here piece I just traced, if I make it come down, even with that, it's going to be short. So the wingtip bow is going to come in a little bit shy of this. Not that that would be a problem, you know, that's not a big deal. But I want it to blend somewhat. So anyways, uh, I'll go ahead and sand this down now. Now, if this is pine, northern white pine, or Sitka spruce, or hemlock, or something like this, cedar, that would sand real quick. Um, this, this, this here is commercial white ash. It will not sand real quick. It'll take me a while, so I'll probably cross grain sand it at first and then, uh, and then go with the grain, get it ripped off real quick. Now I just cut this real quick on the bandsaw and uh, I'll take it here and <clears throat> see how it lines up with the thickness at least right in here and that looks like it's going to be about the same so I'll probably just use this and trace it and it looks like it's going to come out pretty even there so I'll just use this piece all right we're at the middle of the wing or at the five foot mark anyways this is the aileron and that's the uh, trailing edge of the main wing main wing body so this here's the rib that continues on down on the main part of the wing. Then you have an eighth of an inch uh, piece, like the one we just cut, triangle piece. It runs from there down. And then you have another one here on the aileron side, and you have a quarter of an inch clearance gap. So. We have to cut, we still have this here trailing edge butted right up against that. So we have to cut off an eighth, a quarter, and an eighth. So let's see, that used to be a half inch. Yep, it still is. 
you can uh, use a square and measure it and cut it straight or you can stack up exactly what you're going to be using eighth inch piece rib gap which is quarter inch and another eighth inch piece and that shows you that you've got plenty of material so you just scribe a line right down on this side of it cut this off right there and of course I'm going to use my oscillating saw to do this now we're going to go ahead and scuff up the material make sure we have an op good open grain and right there where that T88 T88 bonds to itself pretty well but you want to scuff it you don't want nice clean dry T88 glued up to more T88 you got to, you have to scuff it and then it'll it'll bond real well to itself and of course if it's lumped up you don't want it but this here is soaked right into the wood and real flat so I'm going to scuff that up I already I already did the plywood and we're only going to do the part that goes to the main part of the wing here that there's nice and straight I might I might take my oscillating saw and just run back and forth on that and just I think it's called skiving where you just kind of shave on the edge of it anyways uh, make sure that's good and even and uh, we're only going to do this part because this one here actually will be cut at an angle on the front side it won't even be touching up here on the spar this one here will be against the spar and then we'll have a block running up and down along this here side of it right here so it'll be blocked and then uh, butted up against that <clears throat> the other one we'll wait until we put the uh, the, the uh, aileron spar in here and then we'll attach it so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this on clamp it in there and uh, just butt it up against there and before it dries then I'll cut a block put on the back side of it run up and down right there so here's the block I'm going to put in here and it doesn't have to fit tight or anything just Oh, come on. I don't know what's wrong with my phone. It won't focus anymore. Time to get a new phone. Anyways, that's my block. Of course, i got to scuff it up with some sandpaper, both on this side and this side over here. This part I'm going to glue up. Here's another thing you might want to pre-do, and that is find clamps that's going to allow you to clamp this against the back wall something you can reach in from here and reach in from down there probably just kind of like dry fitting you want to dry clamp it make sure once you get it on there you're going to be able to clamp it in place um, noticed on one group this person was talking about never clamping any of his joints and I'm like I've never heard of that everybody clamps every joint never always clamp at least light pressure on uh, every joint and you want to get good clamping not you not when I say good clamping in other words make sure the block isn't twisted you know and, and at an angle or something like that now obviously with these clamps in a way I'm not going to be able to clamp like this so well it'd be difficult anyways so what I'll do is I'll get a stick and I'll just cut it off so that I'm uh, got a little bit of pressure pushing it in I'll get a pusher stick probably put one here for up here and then I'll cross the other one down the other way maybe I'll go more straight right in yeah that's what I'll do put one in right here can you see that yeah and, uh, and then one up here
So we have some creative clamping, two pushers at each rib cap going into the corner and then one in the middle going to this here vertical. And you don't need much extra length, just like a, an eighth of an inch over this kind of a span is, is plenty. You get some pretty good pressure. And of course I'd like to clamp along this all the way. More creative clamping here. Just shoved a piece of geodetic in there. Still a little open right there, but I guess... Oh, that there, the uh, trailing edge comes down below it a little bit. And that'll be... I'll bench that off a little bit right there. And then the top side of it sticks up just a pinch and I'll bench that off after it's dry. But the bottom, I get the bottom perfectly even with the bottom rib. Unfortunately, I have some glue left over, but uh, anytime you have some, do a quick inspection and you'll find, you'll find things like, like that. And uh, just run down through it real quick and go like this, and you'll you'll find at least a few of them that you didn't get glued up. And uh, go ahead and glue them up now. Now I've always put a one-inch band on the outer rib, just like just like the one I put on the inner or the root rib. This here one-inch stiffener, it's called. And I've always put one on the outside. I just noticed on the print it doesn't show that. It does show that you put a stiffener from here up to the spar on the aileron. Um, I've always put the stiffener on and then, of course, cut it off right here. And that would be part of the aileron, the stiffener to the aileron. But uh, <clears throat> I think I will continue to do that just do it that way uh, doesn't add much weight but definitely you can tell when you put it on there it adds a lot of stiffening force to the uh, to the wing uh, probably gonna quit for tonight go upstairs put on Raymond Reddington and trace a bunch of these and uh, and tomorrow I'll cut a bunch of these out and then continue with the aileron.